Welcome to another video. Ubuntu 2010 Groovy Gorilla has been released these days and we simply couldn't resist trying it. This is our verdict after having used it for several days. The Ubuntu installation is a topic we have already covered in one of our past videos, which you can find in the description down below. So we are diving right into our newly installed Ubuntu 2010 build. Right after the installation we checked for updates. Despite being newly installed, the system still offered us some of the new packages to be installed. We chose to install those updates. Not only that, we also decided to check if there were any updates available in the command line. With that being done, now let's welcome the brand new Ubuntu 2010 freshly installed. This is its desktop and its app grid. This is its file manager, which looks exactly the same as the one in its predecessor, Ubuntu 2004. Ok now, before we see what's new in Ubuntu 2010 compared to Ubuntu 2004, first let's change the wallpaper by choosing one of those on offer in Groovy Gorilla. We've seen this photo somewhere before, possibly on pixabay.com, so we'll choose this one. In the appearance section, things look the same as in Focal Fossa. We have three colors of the same desktop theme – light, standard and dark. Good old Firefox is of course the default web browser. And despite not being installed on the latest and greatest hardware, the system is quite responsive and works decently. Again, on the hardware we have been using for testing Ubuntu builds, you can see more in one of our previous videos. The link is available in the description of this video. Speaking of browsers, we also installed the Microsoft Edge development version in Ubuntu to see how it works. At first sight, it seems to work as it would in Windows 10. The next step is to check out the Ubuntu software application. One of the most serious complaints by users is that Ubuntu favors snap packages over those from Ubuntu repositories. Well, let's check it out by choosing one of the apps available. Let's take GIMP, a very popular image manipulation program, as an example. It's a snap application. That poses a question if it's possible to install web apps. But first, we will quickly check out if the app images work as they should. Let's try only Office app image for instance. It works ok for us. To make sure that the apps on offer in the Ubuntu software application are predominantly snaps, we search for another one. That's the one we regularly use, Audacity, a quite popular audio editing program. Seems like it's offered as a snap too. But to install a Snap application in Ubuntu, you're just one click away. Now let's go to the Synaptic Package Manager, an old school app for managing applications in Debian based systems. We need it for installing deb files. Audacity is available via Synaptic, 
So we proceed with the installation. After the app is installed, let's go to the app grid. In Ubuntu 2010, the apps are not automatically arranged, because you can reorder them according to your liking. So we move the Audacity icon near the top, where it should be in alphabetical order. This is its first start, and the app loads reasonably fast. To check out if Audacity is also a Snap app, despite being installed via Synaptic, we open the File Manager application and go to the Snap folder. Obviously, Audacity is not there, so it means that we have installed it as a regular application from the Ubuntu repositories. If you wish to double check it, you can by opening the terminal and listing available snaps. Again, Audacity is not on the list. Excellent! So, the Deb apps are still there in Ubuntu and it's not hard to install them. Now, a word or two on customization. If you are a newcomer to Linux and would like to change the wallpaper by choosing one which is not in the defaults, then here's how to do it. Ubuntu's setting app gives an easy way to add a photo from your computer. On the right hand side of the title bar, there's the Add Picture button, and basically that's it. And finally, let's see what's new in Ubuntu 2010, which makes it different from Ubuntu 2004. Here are some of the new things Groovy Gorilla brings to the table. First, calendar events are shown in the message tray. In this Ubuntu version, you don't need to install the GNOME Tweaks application to get this playing battery percentage in the top panel. The next thing is that the top right hand menu now offers the option to restart your system, which now makes it one mouse click less than before. The option to reorder app icons in the main menu we have already mentioned. For the video, we will group all the LibreOffice apps into one single folder. The default screenshot tool has been revamped, and now it has a new clean look. And of course, with Ubuntu 2010, a user gets newer versions of the popular software, such as LibreOffice. Speaking of the LibreOffice suite, in Ubuntu 2010, its icons are now compatible with Ubuntu's default Yaru icon set. All in all, in our opinion, Ubuntu 2010 is an even more polished computing experience compared to Ubuntu 2004, and if you are after newer versions of software available and the latest features, then you can upgrade to the new version or you can do a clean install. Users have made many objections to Ubuntu, such as the use of snaps or the way they implement the GNOME desktop environment. But, from the point of view of an average computer user or a Linux novice user, Ubuntu is still the best entry point in the Linux world. You just install it and it just works out of the box. Installing new apps is easy and you don't need to tweak anything to hit the ground running. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you've liked it. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. See you next time.